Hello everyone, welcome back to LFTV. We are live on Twitch and we are live on YouTube. You're probably thinking, how am I controlling this? Well, I'm not. It's being controlled elsewhere, but we are live. Great to see you all with us as well. I, I can't see your messages, but you'll see them on display as we go through this. And we're going to take a look back at what Darren Eels said. Of course, he was interviewed and he had a phone in on BBC Radio Newcastle so we're going to take a little look back at what he's been saying especially with the stadium expansion is the big one we've got six topics to rattle through uh, the first one of course I've just mentioned there is the stadium expansion and the club all looking at experts and finding ways of how we can expand St James's Park and this is what Darren Eel said um, there's demand for the tickets um that people, you know, at the moment can't get into the building. So it's one of the challenges we have is, you know, we're in a great location, obviously, St James's Park, the cathedral on the hill. Um, you know, it's just amazing to have that location in the city. Uh, so one of the things we want to do, and this is something that we've, um, we've just basically started that process of what they call a stadium feasibility study. And so that is to get in some experts to take a look with a blank sheet of paper and say what could we do to improve the stadium in terms of capacity uh, and the important thing on this one and you know I sort of chuckle about it with our board and with the senior management team is everyone's a sort of uh, amateur architect so everyone's got a view on what you can do at St James's Park and what might be potential and, and I think the reality is we need some experts to come in with no preconceptions mm -hmm. uh, look at it and actually give us that feedback of you could do X or Y, or actually you can't do Z because of rights of light, whatever it might be. Um, so that's our focus is to look at the at the possibilities. What is the art of the possible? And then obviously at that stage, we'll be able to consult, talk with the fans and say, look, you know, here's the potential of what we could do to improve it. I think one thing we have done, and I think a lot of people know this, is Strawberry Place, so the area of land outside of St. James's Park. We purchased that earlier this year. Um, we putting in planning permission at the moment for a fan zone. So that will be on a temporary basis. Really excited about us being able to hopefully get something up this season where we have that fan zone. So we're making use of that land for our supporters on a match day and on a non-match day. It's a real good chance for us to engage with the supporters uh, and build you know, those closer connections that we've spoken about. But also having that land obviously just gives us more flexibility in terms of potential things we might be able to do around the stadium. You know, everyone can have a view of, you know, is it 60, is it 65, is it 70? But obviously what we need to do is actually do some research, do some soundings and understand what is the, the best side. But clearly, you know, we want to try and get more seats mm. so that we can have more availability for our supporters. So they don't know as of yet. Obviously, they've been joking on. The boardroom, uh, they can speculate, and everybody thinks they're experts, of course, as Darren Eels was saying there. Um, but we'll have to wait and see whether it's going to be the East Stand. He's obviously men mentioned about the fan zone, of course, as well, which gives, a, gives them uh, options for the future. And look, I think at the moment, the demand, as, as he said already, is massive at the moment. How many can you fit in? You're probably talking at the moment, because the times are good, at least 20,000 plus. So you're talking already there, you're hitting the ward 72 to 75,000 seat act. Stadium, how many can Newcastle expand, expand by? Can they get to 60 for the time being, maybe expand further than that in the future? I don't know. But the good thing is that they don't want to move from St. James's Park as of yet. They have said that. Um, moving on, and I want to know what you think, of course, as well. Because I've seen some of your live comments uh, already appearing. But we'll move on from that as well. Uh, the Champions League draw, which is on August the 31st. We're all excited by it to see where we're going abroad again. Obviously, I've just done America, and I'm very excited personally myself to see where I'm going to go for two, three nights uh, over autumn and December. So I'm very excited to see that. Uh, we are going to be in part four, which Darren Eald does talk about here. And he was asked, who would he like in the draw? The group. I mean, I suppose I'm a bit more like a fan in the sense that, you know, I think any group we're going to be in is going to be the group of death because no one's going to want us in part four. I think, you know, pot four means we're going to get three tough teams by mm -hmm. the nature of, of the draw. But I don't think that's a bad thing because I don't think any team's going to want to come to Newcastle on a Champions League evening uh, and play under the lights with that atmosphere. So from my perspective, you know, I'm a little bit of I'd love to get around Madrid or one of the big guys uh, and bring them to Newcastle and give them a real go. So from that perspective, 
uh, you know, I'll take that sort of group of death. And I think, you know, it's exciting that we've got this opportunity and I don't think we should be afraid of anyone. Uh, yeah, it's a tricky one, I suppose. Um, you know, I'd like Real Madrid. If you then got one of the sort of big Italian teams, um, you know, I wouldn't mind a sort of German, Italian and uh, Spanish team and let's go for it. So I'm watching these clips as you are, by the way, everybody. So, yeah, so Real Madrid, fancy it? I mean, I wouldn't mind going to Madrid. I'm not that keen. I'm not going to lie. I'm not keen on going to Barcelona, the Olympic Stadium that they're using. I mean, I've been there when I was at Barcelona in the Olympic Park area. I'm not a big fan of it, so I'd rather have it in the Camp Nou. But obviously that's getting redone. It's been knocked down and uh, rebuilt. But for me, uh, Dortmund away. I would love Dortmund away. War flags versus the Dortmund wall. <sighs> Yes, please. Uh, and that's what I would love to have a look at and, and to attend, just to tick it off and say, yeah, that was class, that. It's an event on the field and off the field at the same time. Uh, moving on to the good old FFP. Everybody's favourite topic. Obviously, we had Jay in Atlanta on the channel. Thank you very much, Jay. Uh, a couple of weeks back over in the States, and he was mentioning FFP. We've done a video with regarding that. And, of course, it's a big talking point because Newcastle have all this money in the world, with obviously the PIF, but they can't go and, they can't go crazy and spend daft wages like they can in the Saudi Pro League. But you know we've got to stay within the financial fair play. We've obviously seen up the Amazon documentary, the first episode where they couldn't go any higher than forty plus five million add-ons for Andy Gordon. Otherwise they'll breach it. And of course, staying with the FFP. Of course, he's mentioned here yeah, a couple of uh, clubs in this clip. Yeah, but this is Darren Eels on the FFP. You know that's part of the role that I've got here with Newcastle United is, you know, we want to grow as a club, we want to grow as quick as we can as a club, but we have to do it within the rules. And they're obviously quite strictly enforced and they look at a lot of those sort of loopholes and, you know, we have to make sure that we're doing things the right way. But I think, you know, the way, if I can put it simply, the way we're trying to meet the, the FFP and grow as a club is you've got to grow your revenues. Obviously, the more revenue you have, the more you're able to spend on players on the salaries on, on the transfers uh, and obviously you know one of the ways you can get the income is moving players because when you move a player you recognize all of that um, revenue at that time when you buy a player you amortize and what that means it's an accounting term that you spread out the cost across the length of the contract so what that does mean if you're churning players it gives you a little bit more availability to spend money but I think, you know, for us, what we're really focusing on is how do we have the most efficient spend? So we know we've got a certain amount. So that's why we spend a lot of time talking with Dan and with Eddie about what the squad looks like, how we want to build it, what type of players and profile that Eddie and Dan are looking for for the team. So one way is efficient spend. And then the second way is obviously looking at growing the revenues. And you've seen already some of the things we've done from our new shirt sponsorship through to, you know, ideas we've got in the future as we grow you know, what is an amazing club? I mean, we were up just over, just under 30% global viewing figures. So that is around the world, that was how much we went up last year. The Premier League on average went up 6%. So we're clearly a club that is growing in terms of interest and that is very attractive to corporate sponsors. So as we're talking to our partners, we're able to say, look, here's an opportunity for you to get on this sort of uh, rocket ship that's launching to the to be a top six sustainable club. And with those revenues, that gives us more yeah, spending. As we know at the moment, Manchester City and Everton are both actually going through a tribunal, so we don't know mm. what's going to happen there. But, you know, that's the reality. Is, I and mean, we'll be very clear as a club that, you know, we meet the rules. We knew these were the rules when, when the takeover took place. They're the rules that everybody has to abide by. Uh, and we're going to abide by them. But I do love the suggestions. The one I loved, uh, I remember seeing a couple of weeks ago, was the idea of getting the old club call line up and suddenly having, <laughs> you know, 30 million calls from Saudi Arabia, uh, sort of five pounds a minute. Look, it's, it's frustrating. Of course, it's frustrating. We've got all the money. And obviously, the rules are in place for a reason. Um, and obviously, the next week's episode on Amazon Documentary, uh, you'll see, obviously, the shirt sponsorship, which, which is heavily talked about uh, i'm not going to put any spoilers out there but amanda isn't best pleased put it that way um about it uh, about the clubs uh, voting against you know the sponsorships coming from the same company or sub companies but staying with the ffp obviously the seller agreement obviously the castora deal will be gone next next season we know that and obviously they're looking at other you know avenues and you know you, you talk about the uh, the memberships which we will come on to in a minute um, so there's ways that the club and obviously the fans own and 
transfer sales and all of that kind of stuff as well. But the fan engagement, as we all know, is the best it's ever been uh, for such a long time. You know, the club uh, were asked would they actually start their own channel, actually Newcastle United channel, where you subscribe to it, like an independent channel away from that. And the, the engagement, how it's so important for the club to feel connected, whether you're in South America, North America, Asia, Africa, Europe, here in Newcastle City Centre, wherever in the are in the world, it's so important that a fan feels connected to the club. And this is what Mr Eel said. Well, that's a great question. I think, look, on all of these things, as we grow as a club, that's something that potentially we would look at. I think at, at the moment we've got you know, a lot on our plate in terms of what we're trying to do. I think, you know, what we want to try and get to is that position where, you know, all of our supporters, wherever they are, whether it's in Newcastle, Blythe, you know, London, around the world, feel closer connected to the club. And clearly, one of the ways we can do that is in terms of content and being able to give our fans that sort of glimpse behind the curtain. And I'll be honest, it's one of the reasons that we did the Amazon documentary that comes out tomorrow is, you know, the reality is that gives a chance for all of our fans to see perhaps a little bit that otherwise they wouldn't see behind the club and it helps them to get a closer connection. Um, so anything we can do like that is is in our interest because we want to build that connection, that closer connection with our fans. So I think, you know, hopefully over time we're going to just be developing more and more content. Did the sort of premiere and it was great because we watched it with fans. So I yeah. think, you know, the reality is and because you work in football, it's sort of, you know what goes on behind. You see what's sort of there in the sausage making. And I think it was really good to see it through the lens of supporters that are perhaps seeing some of those things that they wouldn't normally know. I mean, you've seen some of the trailers, but whether it's transfer signings, whether it's what goes into getting a sponsorship for the front of shirt, you know, some of the topics that are covered gives a little glimpse behind the curtain. I think that's... That's great because it helps our supporters get a better connection, I think, with the club. We're in the, uh, we're in the content industry. Um, I mean, I've been out in America, so I've seen it really on the sharp end where a Super Bowl quarterback will give an interview literally 30 seconds before the biggest game in his life mm. and they just take it for granted. And I get what Eddie says and I understand why you know, that was his view, but the reality is we had probably the most unbelievable season that any of us could have expected and we had the cameras there. So, you know, in that perspective we got to a Wembley final we finished fourth with the cameras there so I think the reality is you have a moment where it's noticeable because for the first time you know I felt it as well you're in a meeting and a, a camera's there or you're mic'd up and you're a bit self-conscious but what you soon find is within sort of three or four days you just don't even realize and I think that's what what tends to happen on these things. Vitally important and even I can kind of relate to even us as YouTube team that we've got to engage with you lot, our audience, because if, you, if we don't know how you are feeling about the channel, about Newcastle United, and engagement with the live comments that you're seeing on your screen, and you know the comments that you put in underneath the videos, we'll never know how you are feeling, whether you're feeling knocked off, or you're happy, or things that are going well with the channel and stuff like that, feedback, especially our own memberships as well. Uh, speaking of memberships, of course, you get exclusive videos from us as well, so it's only 99 pence. Absolute bargain, you'll see it underneath this video where it says join. But the the e ticketing, of course, is a big thing. Obviously, Aston Villa, uh, Man City away, we have to use digital tickets as well, uh, which I'll be at. Um, it's a thing now, it's yeah, paper tickets are going eventually, and we will still use paper tickets a couple of times this season away from home. And of course, the ballot system, which really, really upsets quite a bit of people. Obviously, the club did listen and reverse, I say reverse, not reverse, lower the price of the ticket but it's still not ideal but you know some fans aren't going to be happy that you know they're not guaranteed to go to a game which i understand those fans but you know this is quite a lengthy clip this one and this is what darren eel said about the e-ticket and the ballot system encourage everyone to download their ticket basically you get the link with your season ticket on you download it whether it's android or your Apple phone, it just goes into your wallet and then you don't need Wi-Fi, it's there for the whole season. So once it's downloaded, it is a simple process, Tom. I know it doesn't feel like that, but once you've got it down there and it's loaded, it's going to be straightforward. But we understand that people, you know, at first, it's always difficult when you're changing systems. And we went through this when I was in Atlanta when we opened the stadium. We actually went cashless as well the very first game. 
and people took probably two games before they got used to it. So Saturday's game, we encourage everyone to come early. We're actually opening up two hours before, so half five kickoff. We're going to open at 3.30. We've got 50% off food and drink to encourage people to come in early. Anyone who scanned their ticket before 4.45 will be entered into a draw for a signed shirt. So we really want to encourage everyone, if you haven't downloaded it in particular, to take the time just to download it before you come. We'll have people there that are going to be helping but obviously, if everyone comes with five minutes to go, there's going to be a delay for those people that haven't downloaded it. In terms of the help, we've actually done a number of videos on the website. So we have six different videos which can give you um, advice on different aspects of the digital ticketing experience. We've also been holding workshops. So we've had workshops for the last two two weeks where you can come in and we specifically can give that coaching and then of course and look it's a natural thing we've seen the box office for the last couple of weeks people feel comfortable so i take that as a as a positive that people actually want to come to the box office they know it to get that advice but the the information that you need is available on the website is exactly the same as what you'll get told in person but look i get it people like that sort of human interaction mm. and that's why we'll have a number of positions around the stadium as well where we can help there'll be wi-fi spots to help download if you haven't but the biggest call out is just to download it before you come and then it'll be seamless the reality is i mean the balloting is a good example where you know firstly we went to a balloting system because we'd listened to our fans we held last season a number of fan workshops where we were encouraging people to give their feedback. We had a ticketing survey that went out digitally and then we followed up with focus groups. So a number of those at St. James's Park where staff would be there from our supporter services. I would go to uh, a couple of them as well. And that was a chance for us to talk about a lot of issues, whether it was away ticketing. And one of the interesting ones was we got a lot of feedback overwhelmingly for rather than the phone up which it used to be for the membership, actually having a ballot so that it was more fairly allocated. But as you point out, Simon, there was two sort of ways we could do it. We went with one way, sort of given you know what we felt from the feedback was the best way. It was clear that that wasn't really what the fans wanted. So mm. you know we're not um, we're not going to just dig our heels and say right that's the way we've done it. And I think that's the that's the one thing I want to to emphasise. You know every decision we're making is we're trying to do what's good for the club. So it isn't about um, you know, thinking that we know best. We want to talk to the fans. We want to consult. The idea is that we end up with things that are better for the fans as a whole. But the clearly, and Wembley's a good example, you'll never, ever have a system where everyone's going to be happy. I think that's the reality. We will consult. We will take the fans' views wherever we can. We're open to, to learning as well from our experiences and using that in the next sort of... Uh, issue that we may have but the reality is that doesn't mean everyone's going to be happy because they're never going to all be happy we saw it with Wembley whichever way you split that cake of how you distribute the tickets there's always going to be someone that feels like oh uh -huh. aggrieved because they were the one that just got cut off from getting a ticket and so we'll never take that away the fact that there's always going to be that disappointment if you're not in that group that didn't get a ticket but what we can say we'll always do is consult with the fans talk to the fans put that into the mixer when we're making that decision. So there you go. So all of those clips are courtesy of BBC Radio Newcastle. If you do want to see the full interview, go on to their social medias. You'll see it down eels um, on the BBC Radio Newcastle. It's a fantastic um, phone in show. It's a good insight of what's happening. We love this kind of interaction. Again, we'll go back to engagement. You know, this is why they do it. Um, fantastic. I love it. I would need to see more of it as well. So, you know, Newcastle is exciting times at the moment. Start of the season, we've got Champions League to look forward to. We've got a tough start of the Premier League as well. But um, yeah, that is the. Uh, it feels weird not having me, me Machia, in control in it. I feel a bit. I never know. I've just got to rely on another person running this, which is weird. But anyway, <laughs> they're wait they're, they're they're waiting to stand by to end this uh, uh, live video. But yeah, thank you very much for watching. Uh, we roll on Aston Villa. Can you believe it? If you're watching this on the day of the game as well, your score predictions, I want to know what you are saying uh, in the live comments or the comments underneath this video as well. But yeah, we're going to end this stream there and I'll leave it up to uh, our wonderful producer whose name shall be not revealed as of yet. Take care, watch this, Dean, everybody, and thanks for watching today.